Hey everybody, this is Stevie J from AngryMarks.com, and as you can see from the website, the headline of the night is At Extreme Rules 2012, John Cena beat Brock Lesnar, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we got to that point and what happened on the pay-per-view. The pre-show was Santino versus The Miz for the United States title, and it's your pretty typical opening pre-show pay-per-view match, except for the fact that I really thought The Miz was going to uh, end Santino's title reign, which I wasn't looking forward to. But in the end, Santino did prevail after all of The Miz's whining and complaining about how he was a year ago the main event at Extreme Rules, and now he was in a pre-show match, but he was going to make this the highest rated YouTube show ever. Well, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but... Santino still managed to hit the Cobra after the Miz crotched himself on the turnbuckle, and he retains the U.S. title. Then we had the spin the wheel, make the deal, with Teddy Long spinning the wheel at the behest of Eve Torres, and it landed on a tables match. So, Big Show and Cody Rhodes would be contested with tables. Now, this was already known by the live crowd in Chicago because they were selling t-shirts that listed the stipulation for the match before this Spin the wheel, make the deal even took place. Then we had a 10 minute delay until the pay per view started, and we started with Kane versus Randy Orton. Falls count anywhere. Yeah, it was an okay match. Nothing really to write home about. I mean, I, I guess I didn't hate it. They did do a couple of nice spots, including Orton draping Kane off of the announce table and hitting a draping DDT, but that actually wasn't the finish. Kane blocked an RKO and hit a choke slam for two. Orton kicked out of that. And then Orton gets out of a tombstone attempt and gives Kane an RKO on a steel chair for three and gets the pinfall. Then we got a bonus match with Brodus Clay and Hornswoggle doing a little dance routine with the Funkettes to face Dolph Ziggler with Jack Swagger and Vicky Guerrero at ringside. Short match, Brodus Clay wins by uh, giving a headbutt to Dolph as he's charging. And then he hits the Funk U, the, the full body press onto him on the canvas and picks up the wins. The Big Show versus Cody Rhodes for the Intercontinental title. And this one had a very weird finish that a lot of people were trying to figure out in the bar. Did they plan it that way or not? What happened was that Show grabbed the table and threw it into the ring and Cody Rhodes kicked him off the apron while he was doing that. And as Show kind of half fell backwards, he stepped on a table that was there at ringside and the table cracked under his weight. So the referee decided, well, that's Big Show going through a table. The match is over. So Cody Rose wins the Intercontinental title. This infuriated the Big Show, who absolutely destroyed him after the match, throwing him through tables left and right. The crowd in Chicago was even chanting, one more time, one more time. And so he obliged them by throwing Cody over the ropes through a table right in front of the announcers. This is the textbook definition of a Pyrrhic victory. He won, but he got beat to hell. So I hope you enjoy that Intercontinental title, Cody. And then we had a Daniel Bryan promo backstage. Fans were chanting, yes, 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 along with him. And finally, we got the match we deserved at WrestleMania. It went all three falls. The first fall, Daniel Bryan intentionally lost it by getting disqualified for kicking too much ass. And then he won the second fall by technical submission when Sheamus refused to tap out. And you could see Daniel Bryan savoring the moment, thinking the match was all over and he had it won. But unfortunately, it didn't work out that way because... When he went to the top rope, he missed with a dive because Sheamus rolled out of the way. He hit double sledges even though he had had his arm injured earlier in the match by Brian throwing it repeatedly into the ring post. And he hit the Irish curse and the fans in Chicago were actually booing because they wanted Daniel Bryan to win. But he hit the brogue kick for three and retained in two out of three falls. He won the first fall by DQ, lost the second fall by submission, and won the third fall with a pin count after the brogue kick. Then we had a, another bonus match. They sent out two jobbers who I have to assume are locals from like Resistance Pro Wrestling or some other fed that's in the Chicago area. Their names, and I forgive if, if they aren't right, I apologize for that, but I believe their names were Aaron Relic and Jay Hatton. And I knew what was going to happen here. Ryback was just going to come out and kill them. 
But they got a little promo time, and the bigger guy of the two of them kept saying over and over again, two is greater than one. Two is greater than one. Clearly trying to irritate the crowd, and uh, the crowd was very happy to see Ryback. In fact, they started chanting, Goldberg, Goldberg. So they were having some fun with this, and I have to admit that Ryback does kind of look like a jacked-up Goldberg, except he's wearing an RVD spray-painted singlet. So, In fact, the Bacar, the guy sitting next to me, said he kind of looks like a cross between RVD, Goldberg, and Big Vito. Although he didn't remember who Big Vito was. He was just like, you know that tough guy who used to wear a dress? And unfortunately, as a wrestling fan, I knew who he was talking about. Then we had Punk and Jericho in a Chicago street fight. That was every bit the show stealer it was promised to be. They had a hell of a match. They beat the crap out of each other. Jericho poured beer all over him. You know, he got everything done to him. And Punk got everything done back to him in return. Including a TV monitor to the back. An announce table split over his back. Shattering into a million pieces. The go to sleep was countered multiple times. You had to really wonder if they were going to let Punk get the win in Chicago. But... They've done it before, and they did it here again because he managed to block an attempt to uh, finish him off with a go-to-sleep and hit the go-to-sleep of his own and finally won the match. It was really, really good. Then we went backstage, and it was Beth Phoenix hobbling on one leg and telling Nikki Bella that she could beat her one leg or no leg. She'd go out there and win the match, but Eve Torres said, you're not medically cleared. You don't get to compete tonight. And so Beth said, well, when I do, I'm taking that title and taking it home with me. And she hobbled off screen. So Nikki was all happy and was like, hey, we get the night off. And she and Bree start to leave. And Eve Torres is like, no, 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 no. We promised a women's title match. And we're going to give the people a women's title match. And they start to look really concerned. And Eve smirks and goes, oh, don't worry. It's not karma. And they both breathe a sigh of relief. But it turns out. The opponent to be determined that we didn't know going into the match was Layla L. Returning after a year off from injury. And she wins the match and wins the women's title. So I guess they're holding off on Karma for a little while longer. Although I would think that they would want Karma to destroy a heel like the Bellas. And not a baby face like Layla. So I really don't know where they're going with this. And I'm looking forward to finding out. And in the main event, as noted at the beginning of this video recap, Brock Lesnar and John Cena in an Extreme Rules match was a violent and nasty affair that Cena won in the end, but not without getting his forehead busted open in the first minute. Cena charged at him, Lesnar double-legged him to the ground, and then just cracked into him with MMA elbows, splitting his head open, blood gushing everywhere. Charles Robinson was trying to get on the gloves and stopped the match, and finally got between the two of them and got the doctors to look at Cena and held Lesnar off. But this didn't last. It eventually went back to Cena trying to get... He just tried to charge at him and got double-legged and beat up some more on the ground. And that was the story of a lot of this match, was Cena desperately trying to get at Lesnar and just not having any luck whatsoever in doing so, because every time you get a moment of offense, Lesnar would just overwhelm him and pound the crap out of him i mean he was smearing cena's blood on himself cena's blood was smearing on the canvas this was legitimately extreme because i don't remember seeing this much blood in the main event of a pay-per-view in quite a while but lesnar basically the whole deal with this match was lesnar's own overconfidence is what got to him because he had steel steps in the ring and did a dive over them once to wipe seen out on the floor and it looked like he might have tangled his leg in the ropes and fucked it up but he laughed it off and michael cole was screaming he's sick he got injured and he likes it and he goes for a second dive over the steps into cena but cena has grabbed the padlock and chain that he wore out to the ring and cracks lesnar in the head with it as he's about to dive into him then cena gets in the ring herks him up on his shoulders hits the attitude adjustment onto the steel steps and covers him for three. So that was your Extreme Rules 2012 pay-per-view. I'm Stevie J. You can check out the full report at angrymarks.com. Thanks, everybody.